Iberian Heroes here. This video is going to be on the war between the new and old gods that is commonly seen in traditional religion. Essentially, this myth is about the son or descendant of a mother goddess, who's usually a patron deity of some sort, that kills earlier gods or deities. These deities are often related to the night, darkness, or chthonic forces. I'm going to go over a few wars of the gods. These are specifically picked out. I'm not going to, you know, repeat Indo-European ones because there's a lot of those, but I'll use the most popular. Um, but let's just go over them and I'll be able to explain. So the most famous and most well-known version is the Indo-European Greek story of the Titanomachy. In the beginning, there was three gods. Gaia, the Earth Mother, was one of them. Gaia created the sky, Uranus. Gaia married Uranus and gave birth to the Cyclopses and the many-handed giants. Uranus was afraid of his children, and he decided to send them to the depths of Tartarus. This, obviously, angered Gaia. She went to her other children, the Titans, and told them to kill Uranus in vengeance and so that she could free her children. Kronos led the attack and emasculated Uranus and took his position as the head of the gods, the Sky Father. However, he feared his brothers, so he did not go and save them. And this obviously pissed off Gaia, because that was the whole reason he was sent to defeat Uranus. Gaia then told Kronos that he would bear a son, and that one of those sons would take his place as king of the gods, as Sky Father. Now, Kronos tried to avoid this fate, because Kronos didn't want, you know, he didn't want to be wrecked, basically. Kronos didn't want to be usurped. Rhea, his wife, wanted to prevent her son from being eaten. You see, every single time Rhea, his wife, would give Kronos one of, show him one of her kids, he would swallow them whole. Uh, he would go mad. He would remember the words that his mother told him, and he would try to avoid you know, being usurped. So after he ate Hera, Demeter, Hades, and Poseidon, Rhea decided to disguise a bundle of rocks as her most recent child, Zeus. So she gave him the bundle of rocks and he ate that instead. And then she hid the actual Zeus. Um, and he grew up. Zeus eventually poisoned Kronos and Kronos vomited up all of Zeus's siblings. Zeus then led a revolt and defeated the Titans and took power and became the Sky Father. So another tale of Titanomachy, or of the War of the Gods, the uh, new and old gods, is one specifically from the Mexica. The Mexica, or Aztec, mythology tells a tale of Huitzilopochtli. I need a note here that Aztec, Mexica, whatever you want to call them, is differentiated from other Nahua, because sometimes other Nahua groups are referred to as Aztec. But I'm talking about specifically the Mexica, the guys at Tenochtitlan. So, um, they their patron deity was Huitzilopochtli, and he was the sun god. So, at the very beginning, um, the earth slash mother goddess, Coatlicue, gave birth to many gods. Um, you basically all at once. But one day, she took the feathers of a hummingbird and placed them at her bosom. She became pregnant with Huitzilopochtli. Kaotlikwa's daughter, Koyoshauki, who is a sorceress and also the future moon goddess, and also Kaotlikwa's 400 sons, called the Senson Huitznawa, who are um, the stars of the southern sky, were jealous of this new brother, and they did not believe that Coatlicue 
had a virgin conception. Koyil Shauki and her brothers attempted to murder Koatlikwe, but Huitzilopochtli emerged from Koatlikwe's womb as an adult, armed with a makwawidl or a sword, and he decapitated Koyel Shauki and then butchered the 400 Senson Huitznawa. Uh, Another tale is the Enuma Elish. This is a, from the Semitic Babylonian tradition, and it gives us a story um, that is eerily similar to these others. So it's a story of the creation of the world, much like the Titanomachy. In the beginning, there was only water and mist. The father, Apsu, was the personification of water, while the mother, Tiamat, was the personification of salt water. And they had a son called Mumu, who was the mist. Our Tiamat and Apsu created Kishar and Ashnar. Kishar and Ashnar had a son called Anu, the sky father, who had a son, Enki. Enki was the earth god. Um, he's also referred to as Ea in the Babylonian mythology. Enki is the Sumerian name, but Ea is kind of annoying and hard to say, so I'm going to say Enki. The younger deities made a uh, commotion. They were constantly running around, having a good time, and so Apsu, Mumu, and Tiamat were very angered because they were getting swayed around by this. Eventually, Apsu and Mumu decided to murder the younger gods, while Tiamat disagreed. The young gods discovered this plan. Enki used magic to protect the other young gods, and then he used magic to cause Apsu to lose consciousness. Enki then took the crown and halo of Apsu and killed him. Then he bound Mumu by driving a rope through his nose, which is a huge sign of domination in the ancient Near East. You can see this in a lot of Egyptian art. Enki then became the god of fresh water. Enki married Damkina and became had a son named Marduk, who was the wisest of them all. Marduk was the sun god. Anu began to create windstorms. Some of the gods grew angered by this and went to Tiamat. They told her that it was her duty. She allowed her husband to be killed and now she was allowing them to suffer. Tiamat finally felt, you know, sad and angered by the loss of her husband and the continued disruption by these gods. So Tiamat created serpents to aid the rebellious gods. Tiamat chose Kingu, one of the gods, to be the leader of the rebellious gods. Enki and Anu saw them coming after Ashnar told them to, you know, defend. Uh, the rest of them, but Enki and Ahnu were afraid. They did not think they had a chance, and they were really worried. But Marduk, the sun god, was brave and strong, and Marduk defeated Tiamat uh, herself and led, you know, led the gods to victory. So what do we see here? What we see here is essentially three stories that are awfully similar. Um, you see one that there's a patron deity who wins, who defeats the uh, various uh, old deities, older ones. Well, in all of them, there's an element of revenge. Uh, in the Titanomachy, we see uh, Zeus getting revenge on Kronos, and Kronos getting revenge on Uranus. And Gaia getting revenge on all of them. This element also exists in the Aztec Nativity, as I call it, where Huitzilopochtli gets revenge on those who are trying to kill his mother. So, two vengeances for the mother. In the third one, the Enuma Elish, it's actually the other way around. Tiamat wants to get revenge on the younger gods. Uh, which it's still the mother, revenge for the mother in this case, but she is defeated. In both the Enuma Elish and the Titanomachy, we see something very similar. We, we see multiple generations here. 
we see generations of death and revenge and things like that. While in the uh, Mexica tale, we don't see that. We see one generation, essentially. It's actually the brothers and sister of Huitzilopochtli that are the uh, those who are the ones who want to kill the younger god. Um, this is a little different, obviously. So, in this, in these tales, we also see in the Enunuma Elish uh, Mexica tale, we see the sun god being the hero in the end. I didn't mention this, but the Titans are earthly deities, and they're described as not intelligent and kind of savage. In the Enuma Elish, it's a little different. In the Enuma Elish, we see we see the Earth Mother, which is a uh, kind of you know not chthonic but earthly being, um, and then you know like a water god and all of that, which isn't necessarily you know aren't necessarily dark forces, but they're they're not as you know glorious as the Sky Father and the Sun. They're not as uh, transcendent in most traditions. Um, and we see this moon and the stars, which are symbols of the night in the uh, Aztec tale. So when you see that, you can really see the difference. You can see that the sun, the god of the day, versus these kind of dark forces, a sorceress and a moon goddess. She isn't the moon goddess yet. Actually, um, Huitzilopochtli cuts her up and throws her into the sky, and she becomes the moon. But she is a sorceress. She's a dark being. Um, and they're in constant war after that. So you see a lot of this. You see some, uh, some very common repetition. And it, it's very clear that there are similar themes throughout these stories. Now, what, what do these represent? That's the question, though. What do they represent? We don't, I mean, it's easy to you know, talk about the similarities, but what do they mean? Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what these stories actually mean. Are they something that happened in the ancient world? Is this some sort of uh, kind of ancient recollection of the battle of the gods? To some something that is revealed to people because it literally happened, or is it, as many say, a sort of uh, civilizational religious uh, event? where you start with people worshiping the moon and darkness and um you know the unknown but also very uh chthonic not in like a savage or in a savage way not in like a evil way but in like a savage way uh ideas of the earth and dirt and animals and things like that kind of shamanistic religion uh, then they get uh, replaced by um, they get replaced by more civilized kind of agricultural religion, which values the sun, the sky, uh, things that bring life to the uh, plants, and also war gods as well, which are celebrated more in civilized cultures uh, or traditional cultures. We also see uh, it's really, really, really common here that we see sun gods and sky fathers um so like i said in the mech aztec story and the enemy elish we see a sun god being the main hero but in the enema elish and the titanomachy we both we also see a sky father uh being very important give me your thoughts this is a very informal video i'm just kind of rambling this isn't really scripted I have like the notes of the stories written down, so that's the most, you know, as scripted as it gets. But anyway, I'll see you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please, I'm actually being serious here. Tell me what you think, because I, I actually can't make up, you know, what exactly this means. It's just a kind of very common thing. It's a very, uh, it's a very transcendent idea. Um, like I said, I think it's a, the conquest of civilization, but it could be something else. Who knows?